Alexander Hamilton's letter to the Royal Danish American Gazette on a 1772 hurricane that devastated St. Croix. St. Croix, September 6th, 1772. Honored Sir, I will take up my pen just to give you an imperfect account of one of the most dreadful hurricanes that memory or any records whatever can trace, which happened here on the 31st Ultimo at night. It began about dusk at north and raged very violently till 10 o'clock. Then ensued a sudden and unexpected interval, which lasted about an hour. Meanwhile, the wind was shifting round to the southwest point, from whence it returned with redoubled fury and continued so till near three o'clock in the morning. Good God, what horror and destruction! It is impossible for me to describe or you to form any idea of it. It seemed as if a total dissolution of nature was taking place. The roaring of the sea and wind fiery meteors flying about it in the air, prodigious glare of almost perpetual lightning, the crash of the falling houses and the ear bracing streaks of distress were sufficient to strike astonishment in the angels. A great part of the buildings throughout the island are leveled to the ground, and almost all the rest are very much shattered. Several persons killed and numbers utterly ruined. Whole numbers running about the streets to the keenness of water and air without a bed to lie upon, or a dry covering to the their bodies, and our body harbors entirely bare. In a word, misery, in all its most hideous shapes, spread over the whole face of the country. A strong smell of gunpowder added somewhat to the terrors of the night, and it was observed that the rain was surprisingly salt. Indeed, the water is so brackish and full of sulfur that there is hardly any drinking it. My reflections and feelings on this frightful and melancholy occasion are set forth in the following self-discourse. Where now, O oh, vile lamb, is all thy boasted fortitude and resolution? What is become of thine arrogance and self-sufficiency? Why dost thou tremble and stand aghast? How humble, how helpless, how contemptible you now appear! And for why the jarring of elements, the discord of clouds, O oh, impotent, presumptuous fool! How dost thou offend that omnipotence, who is not alone were enough to quell the destruction that hovers over thee, or crush thee into atoms? See why thy wretched, helpless state, and learn to know thyself. Learn to know thy best support, despise thyself and adore thy God. How sweet, how unutterably sweet were now, the voice of an approving conscience, then couldst thou say, Hence ye idle arms, why do I shrink? What have I to fear? A pleasing calm suspense, a short response from calamity to end in eternal bliss. Let the earth rend, let the plants forsake their course, let the sun be extinguished, and the heavens burst asunder. Yet what have I to dread? Thy staff can never be broken, in omnipotence I trusted. Thus did I reflect, and thus at every gust of the wind did I conclude, till it pleased the Almighty to allay it. Nor did my emotions proceed for either from the suggestions of too much natural fear, or a conscience overburdened with crimes of an uncommon cast. I thank God this is not the case. The scenes of horror exhibited around us naturally awakened such ideas in every thinking abreast, and aggravated the deformity of every failing of our lives. It were a lamentable insensibility indeed not to have had such feelings, and I think inconsistent with human nature. Our distressed, helpless condition taught us humility and contempt of ourselves, the horrors of the night, the prospect of an immediate cruel death, or as one may say, being crushed by the Almighty in his anger filled us with terror, and everything that had tended to weaken our interest with him upbraided us in the strongest colors with our baseness and folly. 
that which in an, a calm, unruffled temper we call a natural clause. And it seemed then like the correction of the deity. Our imagination repressed him as an incensed master, executing vengeance on the crimes of his servants. The father and benefactor were forgot, and in that view a conscience of our guilt filled us with despair. But see, the Lord relents, he hears our prayer. The lightning ceases, the winds are appeased, the warring elements are reconciled, and all things promise peace. The darkness is dispelled, and drooping nature revives at the approaching dawn. Look back, O oh my soul, look back and tremble. Rejoice at thy deliverance, and humble thyself in the presence of thy deliverer. I am afraid, sir, you will think this description more the effort of imagination than a true picture of reality, but I can affirm with the greatest truth that there is not a single circumstance touched upon which I have not absolutely been an eyewitness to. Our general has issued several very salutary and humane regulations, and both in his public and private measures has shown himself the mat. Record. If you like this reading from Samwise J. Morgan, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. You may also follow us on Facebook. Um, tweet me at Samwise J. Morgan. Also follow me on Tumblr. If you would like to uh, support this show that I do, you can support me on Patreon at the link in the description. You can also simply uh, support my podcast on Anchor. You can set up the plan there, and I will also have uh, rewards for my patrons, uh, ranging from shoutouts to um, short original short stories. Just whatever might be there, go there and sign up if you want it. Anyways, uh, stay well, stay safe, stay home, and as always, um, follow the will of Blue Heaven.